Einstein has just been proven wrong. Almost a century ago, two of the most brilliant minds in physics started a debate that continues to this day. Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr argued about the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics at the Solvay Conference in Brussels in 1927. And now, almost 100 years later, Chinese researchers have conducted a spectacular experiment that finally puts an end to this legendary debate, and Einstein lost. What exactly happened there, and why this experiment is so revolutionary, you'll find out now. A warm welcome, everyone. Okay, I know that all of your New Year's resolutions were to spend more time on quantum physics this year. If you have any other resolutions, feel free to write them in the comments. I'm really curious, and maybe we can inspire each other a bit for 2026. And if you want to always be instantly informed about new discoveries in physics this year, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. Subscribing doesn't cost anything. You'll never miss another video, and you help me out. A little bashing, subscribing really helps the video, especially with a thumbs up. The magic threshold for the algorithm is 5,000 likes. Thank you so much, everyone. So we're in Brussels in the year 1927. Einstein and Bohr discuss a thought experiment with a double-slit interferometer. Einstein had a brilliant idea. What if you could use a movable slit that could measure the tiny recoil of a single photon, a particle of light, the kind of idea that comes to mind after your first coffee in the morning? Behind this lies a fundamental question. Can you observe the particle and wave properties of a quantum object at the same time? Einstein was convinced you could. All you would need to do is measure the recoil of the slit precisely enough, then you could determine the trajectory of the photon, and at the same time, see interference patterns that prove that light is a wave. Bohr, on the other hand, insisted on his principle of complementarity. These two properties can never be measured simultaneously. For almost a century, this experiment remained pure theory. Some researchers have conducted similar experiments, but no one has been able to truly implement Einstein's original idea one-to-one. -one. Until now. A team from the University of Science and Technology in China has succeeded. The researchers from China used an absolutely ingenious trick to achieve this. They used a single rubidium atom as this legendary moving slit, but not just any any atom, no, they cooled it down to the absolute quantum ground state. Using optical tweezers, i.e. a highly focused laser beam, they held the atom in place and cooled it in all three dimensions to the limits of what is physically possible. Holding the atom in place is important because the slit can only function as a quantum observer if its momentum uncertainty is comparable to the momentum of a single photon. This would be impossible with a normal macroscopic mirror. It would have a momentum uncertainty that is about a trillion times greater than that of the photon momentum. But with a single ultra-cold atom, we are in the right range. And this is where it gets really clever. The researchers were able to dynamically adjust the momentum uncertainty of the atom by changing the depth of the optical trap. Yu Chen Chang, one of the lead authors of the study, explains, we developed an interferometric configuration in which the single atom serves as an ultralight beam splitter at the quantum limit, entangled with the incoming photon momentum. Admittedly, that's a bit abstract. So what does that actually mean? When a photon hits the atom, it can be deflected either upwards or downwards. The atom receives an equal recoil in the opposite direction. This means that the photon and atom become quantum mechanically entangled. And that was precisely Einstein's idea. But now comes the crucial point. By changing the depth of the trap, the researchers were able to observe how the visibility of single photon interference gradually changes. With a weak trap, i.e. high momentum uncertainty of the atom, clear interference patterns can be seen. The photon behaves like a wave. With a deeper trap, the momentum uncertainty becomes smaller and the interference patterns slowly disappear. Okay, everyone raise your hand if this is still too abstract for you. So, let me put it very simply. By controlling how tightly the atom is held, you can continuously adjust whether the incoming light behaves more like a wave or like a particle. That makes it a bit easier to understand, right? The researchers varied the trap depth from 0.6 millikelvin to 10.49 millikelvin. This is quite cold, only a tiny fraction above absolute zero. And in this range, the momentum uncertainty of the atom changed from 0.78 to 1.6 photon momenta. A perfectly adjustable quantum slit, the measured interference visibilities match the theoretical predictions almost perfectly. At the deepest trap, they achieved a visibility of over 80%. The photon clearly exhibits wave behavior. At the shallowest trap, visibility dropped below 50%. The system is approaching the range where, in theory, path information could be extracted. Why? Because the quantum entanglement between the photon and the atom increases. 
The more precisely we were able to determine the photon's trajectory via atomic recoil, the more its wave character disappeared, demonstrating Bohr's principle of complementarity in action. And if you're not excited enough yet, consider how enormous this challenge was. The entire optical system had to be phase stabilized to a nanometer reference laser. The measured phase fluctuations were just 16.5 milliradians. This corresponds to a path length fluctuation of only 2.8 nanometers. For comparison, a human hair is about 80,000 nanometers thick. This level of stability is absolutely insane and shows the technological standard at which such experiments can be conducted. In the days of Einstein and Bohr, this would have been unthinkable. The researchers write in the study, this allows us to distinguish classical noise due to atomic heating from quantum limited noise due to momentum transfer. So they actually observe the transition from a quantum mechanical state to a more classical state. What does this mean? Einstein was wrong. It is not possible to measure the particle and wave properties of a photon at the same time. Bohr was right with his principle of complementarity. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is fundamental. It is not a limitation of our measuring instruments, but a fundamental characteristic of nature itself. Now, one could say, too bad for Einstein, he annoyingly lost the debate with Bohr after all. But actually, this is a triumph for physics as a whole. Because Einstein and Bohr's debate is what led us to ask these profound questions in the first place. Their thought experiment shaped quantum mechanics even if Einstein's predictions did not apply in this case. Incidentally, the 1927 Solvay conference was a veritable who's who of physics. In addition to Einstein and Bohr, Heisenberg, Schrödinger, Pauli, Dirac, and Marie Curie were also present. Of the 29 participants, 17 were or later became Nobel Prize winners. This debate took place before the most brilliant audience imaginable and continues to have an impact today. What makes the Chinese researchers' experiment so special is that it not only confirms quantum mechanics, but also shows us how quantum entanglement works. The photon and the atom form a coherent quantum system. They cannot be considered separately. The information about the photon's path is, so to speak, smeared into the momentum uncertainty of the atom. And before some of you start writing in the comments, that's all well and good, but how does this help me in everyday life? This has enormous practical significance. Quantum entanglement is the basis for many future technologies, quantum computers, tap-proof quantum communication, ultra-precise quantum sensors. By understanding how entanglement works between systems as different as a photon and an atom, we are learning to better control and utilize these effects. A thought experiment from 1927 will become reality in 2026. And by the way, the team is already planning the next steps. They want to measure the wave functions of the quantum slit directly using tomography and investigate the entanglement between photons and atoms in even greater detail. Perhaps they will even put the slit into a squeezed state, and in the long term, they could gradually increase the mass of the slit to better understand the transition from quantum behavior to classical behavior. I'm glad there are people who are smart enough to do experiments like this. And speaking of the secrets of quantum physics, I've prepared a very special video for you. I recently visited CERN in Switzerland and was allowed to visit areas that are normally not open to the public. There, scientists are researching one of the greatest mysteries of the universe, antimatter. For me, it was one of the absolute highlights of my YouTube career so far. And in the video, I take you behind the scenes of particle research and show you experiments in which antimatter is created. So be sure to click on the top right and check it out, I'd be thrilled. As always, there's another video about space and science in the bottom right corner. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. And remember, Einstein was a genius, but even geniuses can be wrong. Take care, everyone.